You know, it seems just like yesterday, we all heard about this new up and coming 3D printer company that was promising the world out of their new 3D printers at a price that really didn't seem to be real. Fast forward to 2022 and the X1C was released and it kind of turned the 3D printing market upside down. And in hindsight, it's probably a good thing. I mean, it seems like before the X1C, there was like little to no innovation going on with companies in the 3D printing world. They all seem to be just re-releasing old versions with maybe slight tweaks. And then the X1C came out and everybody's like, oh, that's not gonna cut it anymore. Fast forward even more to today and Bamboo Labs is still pedal to the metal. They have variants of the X1C for anybody's budget that still offer you know, a great user experience and excellent print qualities. The area that they're really lacking in though is the entry level, until now. Today's video is sponsored by Voxel PLA. Voxel PLA is a high quality, affordable PLA plus material for 3D printing with spools starting at $16.99 and you can also receive a discount when ordering spools in bulk. All Voxel PLA batches are tested in Voxel's 150 machine print farm in Southern California to ensure the utmost reliability and quality while printing. Voxel also offers free shipping in the United States if you order three spools or more, and you can also get same day shipping. Voxel PLA Pro prints fast with exceptional quality, and it's one of my go-to materials when printing on the channel. Voxel PLA Pro material pairs well with the bamboo printers, and Voxel even offers an enclosure for your P1P called the Vision Enclosure Kit. The Vision Enclosure Kit for the P1P is comprised of five acrylic panels, including all the mounting hardware and tools you need to install it. So click the link in the description below to pick up some high quality Voxel PLA Pro material. And if you have a P1P, check out the Vision Enclosure Kit to make your great printer even better. Now as a dis oh boy. Now as a disclaimer, I should mention that Bamboo Labs did send me this printer, uh, but that's it. They didn't ask to see the video before it goes live. They're not gonna see it before it goes live. They didn't really say anything else about it. They're just like, hey, we got a new printer coming out. Do you wanna see it? And I said, ooh, yeah. And that's pretty much it. This is the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini, and although it's not the larger version of the X1C that we were all hoping for, myself included, it's probably one of the best entry-level printers out there right now. And before we get into the details about the A1, if you're just clicking on this video to find out if the A1 Mini is the printer you should get for your first 3D printer or just another printer to have around, the answer is yes. Go get it. It's good. If I had had this printer three years ago when I bought my first printer, the TiVo Tarantula Pro, you remember that guy? I paid, what, 200 bucks for that thing back then? I would have had a much better experience, period. Now, some could say that the lessons I learned while building the TiVo and then fiddling with the TiVo and then messing with the slicers to get it to print right, all were beneficial because I learned more about 3D printing, I understand it more, but to be honest, I really hate tinkering with 3D printers. I view 3D printers as a tool. I want to take it out of the box, I want to set it up, and that's it. I want to just send stuff to it and know that it's going to print it and print it good every time. And that's all I want out of the 3D printer. And the A1 Mini and pretty much all Bamboo Labs printers do that and they do it very well. And they do that with features that we didn't even think were possible before Bamboo Labs came around. Did you ever hear of Micro LiDAR on a printer before Bamboo Labs came out with the X1C? I know I didn't. I bet somebody out there did, but I didn't hear it. Now, if you're wanting to buy this printer, the A1 Mini itself, it's currently priced at $299, which given the feature set that it ships with is a pretty reasonable price. It's, it's actually pretty good. For context, the FL Sun Q5, which was, if you watch this channel, you know that was my go-to answer for anybody that ever asked me what 3D printer they should buy for their first printer. I would always say, go get an FL Sun Q5. It, it's a good printer. It has a decent build volume. I think at the time it was like $259. I th think you can get them now for $199, which don't get me wrong, it's... That's a good price for a good printer that prints reasonably well, but this thing's better. Now, it's not all perfect. You know, there's going to be concessions to be made when talking about an entry-level 3D printer at this price range, and the biggest one is the build volume. It's pretty small. For context, the X1C, the P1S, and the P1P all have a build volume of 256 by 256 by 256, while the A1 Mini only has 180 by 180 by 180. It's a noticeable difference, and one you're gonna have to consider when thinking about buying an A1. Is it going to have the build volume required for the things you wanna print? If you're printing you know, small figurines or brackets, it'll probably be fine, or if you don't care about breaking up large prints, but if you wanna do the bigger stuff and you don't wanna break it up, maybe it's not for you. And although the 180 millimeter cube size is very small, um, the features that this printer comes with at its price more than make up for it in my opinion. The printer comes with an all metal hot end and a stainless steel nozzle that has this new fast quick change capability that none of the other printers have. It doesn't require any tools. You can just pop out the old nozzle, pop in a new one. 
The hot end has a maximum temperature of 300 C and it will ship with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8 are also available separately. The build sheet is a textured PEI build plate. That's the one I got, the one that shipped with my machine. There is also a smooth PEI build plate that you can buy that's sold separately. I don't have that one, but textured one, double-sided, seems to work great. The build sheet can reach a maximum temperature of 80 C and when setting the bed to 80 C and then if you start at room temperature, it takes about just over six minutes to get from room temperature to an indicated 80 C. And I say indicated because I was kind of looking at this thing with my thermal camera just to see if there's any hot spots or cold spots or anything like that. And the surface temperature that I could read was 75.5. Now I'm using just like a FLIR one that mounts to my phone, so I don't know how well it's calibrated, but it was interesting to note nonetheless. Now the rated speed of the A1 Mini is 500 millimeters a second with a maximum acceleration of 10,000 millimeters a second, which is pretty respectable for a bed slinger. And it is a bit slower than the X1C that I have in the P1S um, when I was running test prints on all these, on all these printers. Uh, this one was the slowest, but only we're only talking like a few minutes for the stuff that I have. The recommended materials for this printer, giving its open air design, is PLA, PETG, TPU, and PVA. That being said, the build sheet does say ABS on it. Um, ASA, I assume, the same. I'm guessing you could probably get away with running those materials. I've ran ASA and ABS on open air printers before, like my Prusa. Works okay, as long as you don't have any breezes blowing through to wrinkle everything up. But on the spec sheet, it does say not recommended. The printer does come equipped with a monitoring camera, so you can log in from like the app on your phone, I don't know what my phone is, or your computer to kind of check on your prints. And that's pretty much all you can do. The frame rate of this camera, if I'm honest, is garbage. Uh, there's no spaghetti detection like on the other printers. It can do time lapses, but like I said, the, it, it's, the frame rate is rough. So it's pretty much only usable, at least in my experience, to just make sure your stuff's still printing. Uh, nice to have, but that's about it. Now there is a light next to the printer, so you could run this in a dark room. Again, the frame rate is like a slideshow. Uh, and there's a little cover that you can see right next to the light. It normally is just over the light, is like a little filter, I guess, but you could rotate that over to cover the camera if that's something you want to do. The A1, of course, does have automatic bed leveling via nozzle touching or nozzle probing of the build plate. Also, you get the vibration calibration that you do on the other machines that Bamboo Lab sells that just basically improve the print quality by removing some of those harmonics from the system, and that runs before each print. Surprisingly, the A1 does have active flow rate calibration, which is something like the P1S does not, the X1C does, uh, but this one does it a little differently. It uses high resolution, high frequency eddy current sensors. Fancy. But you know, in my experience, it actually works pretty well. Now, should be said though, when you, <laughs> when you slice a model on Bamboo Studio and you have the textured PEI build plate enabled, uh, the flow calibration is turned off by default. If you look at what the slicer says when you hover over it, flow calibration on a textured PI build plate may fail due to scattered surface. Now this makes sense to me, unlike the X1C that uses the micro LiDAR where it puts down like a little test track and it scans it to see which one's the best and a, a textured surface could throw the light all randomly everywhere and that might cause you a problem. But this one, it doesn't have the LiDAR. It uses a sensor inside the, the hot end to measure the pressures in there. So I don't know how the textured plate can affect that. There might be something I'm missing, but... Oh, uh, <laughs> hi there, James from the future here. So I was double checking this while making this video and I noticed that on the A1 Mini when using the textured PEI build plate, when you slice a model to print, uh, the flow dynamics are still shut off by default, but when you hover over the checkbox, this message no longer appears. Now, if you go to the X1C and you have the textured PEI build plate selected and you hit print, flow dynamics is also turned off. But when you hover over that checkbox, the message is still there. So it seems like they may have fixed something since I said that. I've been turning it on with the uh, textured plate and I've had no issues and it seems to work pretty darn good. Now something interesting that this thing has that none of the other ones do, including my X1C, is active noise canceling. First thing I noticed when I took this out of the box, plugged it in, was it has speakers. It makes noise when you start a print or stop a print. Well, not stop it, but finish a print. You could turn that off too if that's not something you want. But what those speakers are for is the active noise canceling system which I'll be honest, I thought was a bit gimmicky. I thought it was like a marketing thing when I first read that on a piece of paper, but in practice, it works and it works pretty good.
Now I can only assume this works much the same as noise canceling headphones where it takes the sounds of the, the stepper motors and then it produces an opposite frequency and they cancel each other out. Bob's your uncle, no sound. But there is definitely a noticeable difference with the active noise canceling on versus off, especially when it's running its calibration, it's doing the big old circles, turns it on, turns it off. And it works so good. Like, I hope that they add this to the X1C, the P1S. I hope it's like an option you can buy to put in these printers because it's, it's pretty cool. The loudest thing on this printer is, is the cooling fan, which is kind of the norm with most printers. Stepper motors have gotten pretty darn good. But, you know, when the, when the prints really fast and the cooling fan ramps up, it does sound like a jet engine. But when it's not ramped up, I've had times where I send a print to it and I don't hear anything. I'm like, oh, did it not start? I look over and it's just chugging along nice and nice and quietly. It's, it's actually amazing. And you're also going to get filament run out, filament tangle, and filament odometry sensors that are incorporated into the A1 Mini along with power loss detection. The touchscreen on the A1 Mini is a 2.4 inch IPS display. It is a little bit slower than the X1C I've noticed, but it's more than usable. Looks good. Uh, functions better than like the P1S. I don't really like that cut down screen on the P1S and the P1P. So this is much better. And for storage, you're going to get a micro SD card slot. And the motion controller on the A1 Mini is a dual core Cortex M4, if that is uh, something you wanna know. You know, it's actually pretty incredible how much technology Bamboo Labs has managed to pack into all of their printers, especially one that's as small as the A1 Mini. With the A1 Mini, you also have the option of adding the AMS Lite, which functions just the same as the other AMS system. It looks very different. It seems wobbly and a little chintzy, but this thing is, uh, it's, it's more solid than you think. I have, there's no issues with this thing wanting to tip over. It holds the spools good. I mean, it functions just as good as the ones for the X1C and P1S. Now, of course, adding the AMS Lite to your A1 Mini is going to up the price. It brings it up to 459. But remember, the AMS system is not required for this printer. You can easily run using this spool holder on the back without it. But adding the system to the A1 gives you, you know, added functionality. The most notable one, of course, being multicolor printing. The AMS Lite pretty much has all the function that the, the other, the OG AMS has. Obviously it's not enclosed, but it does have the RFID tag readers. So if you're running bamboo spools with their material, when you load one up, it automatically knows which one it is and it'll automatically adjust the controller and the printer. But third party works just fine. You can see mine's loaded up with Voxel PLA Pro. Works good with that. Uh, this one might even be a little better in some aspects than the OG AMS because that one doesn't like uh, cardboard spools. I've ran cardboard spools through it and have had success. I've also ran cardboard spools and had it fail. This one, you know, it doesn't roll the same as it does in that one. So cardboard would work much better on this one. And I don't think it actually says not to run cardboard on that one. And I know people have done it and it's worked out for them and I would do it. So there's that. Now, even if you don't plan on doing a lot of multicolor prints, the AMS system might be something still worth getting. I myself don't do a lot of multicolor printing, but it's really nice having the convenience of four spools set up, ready to go. You can just go in the slicer, you select the color you want. If you have different material types, you select the material type you want, you just hit go, you don't have to swap out spools. Also the function, the automatic refill function, where if you run out of a spool, it'll automatically switch over. If there's another spool that's the same material type and color is very, very, that's probably what I use it for the most, to be honest. Now the big downside to, I'm looking for some of the downside laying around here. I don't see any, I must clean up. But the big downside to this system, the other AMS system is when you do multicolored prints, you're gonna have wasted material. And unlike the X1C and the P1S, there's no shoot for the uh, purges to go out of. They're just kind of <coughs> shot off into the universe. It's not a huge deal, but there is definitely added cleanup after you're done with a multicolored print than there is with uh, the other kind, the other printers. We should probably also talk about the footprint of this thing. Now the printer itself is pretty small, but when you add the AMS system, this small printer now has a pretty large footprint. Not a huge deal, but I know a lot of people have a very specific spot they want to put their printer or they, maybe they want to put it on a small table. And if you want the AMS system, this one can't sit on top like it can the other ones. So keep in mind, the printer's small, but if you want the AMS, you're going to need a bit more space. Oh, and also the A1 Mini can only support one AMS light. The other printers, you can daisy chain those together and get like up to 16 colors on one printer. This guy, only four. All in all though, after using this printer for the last few weeks, printing many things out with it, doing some other projects, would I recommend this printer for anybody wanting to get into 3D printing or they just want a small secondary printer? Or even if you're not new to 3D printing, but you just want something cheap that prints good, 
Should you get this? The answer is yes. This is what I would get if I was three years ago buying a printer and wanted something that would work, didn't know anything about 3D printer. This would be the golden goose. And that mostly comes down to the user experience is top notch on these things. They're very well built. Everything that needs to be metal is metal. There's no play in everything. All the plastic is just covers. And it's just, it just works. It just works well. And you don't have to put it together. You just take it out of the box, you remove some shipping hardware and you let it calibrate and you're ready to go. Now, given I have the X1C and the P1S, I really want to see how well the A1 Mini did when compared to those higher priced machines. Now for all the printers, I am running the same material. It's Voxel PLA Pro. The only difference being is that there's different colors in each machine, just so I could keep track of what print came off of which one, which you'll see was the big deal here in a minute. The first print that I ran through all three machines was of course the Benchy. This is like the first thing you have to run. It's like required by law. And I didn't run the Benchy that was pre-programmed on the machine to run really, really fast, like the speedboat version. I pulled a model from the interwebs. I sliced it with the same settings, threw it to each machine, let it go. And what I, what it came back with was perfect. I mean, these Benchies are what you are looking for in a Benchy. If I showed you all three of them, you could not tell which one came off with me, which machine. The gray one came off the A1. After seeing that success, I wanted to do it with these little tiny ghosts here since Halloween's coming. And again, I printed them all on the same, with the same settings. And again, you can't tell which one came off which printer. If they weren't color coded, I wouldn't know either. Now, multicolor was the next thing I wanted to try. And when I was looking through the preloaded models on the A1 Mini, I saw this little multicolor Benchy. So that's what I ran. It printed out good. What else do we really expect at this point? Uh, but I also want to see how much waste or purges were required to print this little model. And this gives you an idea how much material is going to be wasted when you choose to 3D print in multicolor. Now, after doing the multicolor one, I kind of want to compare the AMS Lite to the two OG AMSs I have on the X1C and P1S. So I just kind of printed out this Halloween decoration and all three of them and all three of them did good. No jamming, no AMS issues to speak of. They all did <laughs> They all did good. I thought that this comparison was pretty eye-opening to see what a $299 machine could do when compared to like the $699 uh, P1S, the $1,200 X1C. Now adding the AMS system to do this multicolor stuff is going to increase the cost, of course, but it also increases the cost for those other machines as well. Oh, and one last thing, I printed a, where's the, oh, it's on the ground. I printed a skull. I kind of just wanted to see how well it printed with a larger thing. I want to take out more of the build plate to see if there's any issues sticking anywhere, but nah, printed great. Even the little teeth came out exceptionally and those require a lot of support. The support came off easy. It was just overall good. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is the, the mystery box that came with my machine. Now, I don't know how long this mystery box thing is going to last. It says, well, supplies last. A mystery box is going to be shipped with your A1 Mini. And essentially, you have a kit that has all the electronics and hardware you need to build a model. And there's a QR code on the box. You scan it, and it takes you to where you can download the models to print out. Mine was, of course, the engine. There's also, I think, a lamp. There's a, a mouse and a marble run. And I thought this was a really cool idea. I remember when I got my TiVo Tarantula Pro, I, I build it. I printed out the stuff that was preloaded on the card. And then I was like, now what? What do, what do I use this thing for? Now, luckily I had a YouTube channel, so there was plenty of things to be printed. But I think this is great. Having, you know, a box in there that has the hardware and electronics you need to physically build something that came off of your printer. Also being able to have it point you to where to go to get the models. And then once you print them out, you get to see the capabilities of your machine. You get to put something together. And it's just like, you know, it's just nice to have something you made when you're not, when you're brand new to 3D printing that you can put together and be like, oh, this is nice. This is real nice. And coming back to, you know, the user experience, especially for somebody new, all these models are on Maker World. And if you have a bamboo printer, you just go there, you click export to Bamboo Studio. It opens up in studio. The model's already there with the presets. You just hit slice and go. It's just nice. I'll leave links in the description to all these printers down below. And no matter which one you pick up, the X1C, the P1S, the P1P, the A1, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have good prints. And that's what it's all about. Getting a printer that works and it's just one you can trust. Trust me. Trust me. Trust you.